Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Cat, and I am back for the hashtag grunge collab, collab sorry, <laughs> words. Um, this, I am doing a collaboration with Carol Laws. Uh, she has a YouTube channel. If you're not familiar, I'm sure you are, but if you're not, so definitely go ahead and use the hashtag grunge collab to find her or type in Carol Laws um, to find her. She makes fantastic journals. So definitely check her out if you haven't, and there will be a link to her channel in the description box below this video. You're welcome to join in this collaboration. If you post on social media, just use the hashtag grunge collab, and then that way other people will be able to see what you made. So uh, first I'm gonna show you really quick, I have a new digital in the shop that I've had in there for, uh, I don't know, almost a week now, and I keep forgetting to show it. So I'm gonna show it. I also have finished the um, Dragon Rider Digital, and I will be showing that probably tomorrow. I don't have it in the shop quite yet, but it, it probably will be by the time you see this video. But anyway, that is coming as well. This one is called Almost Oz, and it's it was a request by my friend Mitzi at 307 Junk Journals. So um, she requested this, and so I did. Well, she requested The Wizard of Oz, but very hard to find images that are close enough without copyrights and all those kind of things. So this is my take on The Wizard of Oz, um, very similar to my take on Alice in Wonderland, my... Uh, entirely bonkers digital downloads. So these aren't the characters, it's just sort of a play on the whole Wizard of Oz theme, if you will. So um, this page here, they fold like this. So on uh, in a journal, it'll be that on one page and it'll be this one on the other page. And I have kind of grungy them, distressed them and stuff. So they aren't, um, cause they were so bright and I just thought that's gonna use a ton of ink. So I did kind of, bring them down a notch or so, and I did grungy them up a bit. So, anyways, this is what we have, and obviously this one's like this. And there's 20 pages in this kit. And the witch, and the monkeys, and the lion. And then this was sort of my take on the whole tornado thing, like it's swirling, and there's the feet from the Wicked Witch of the East which the house lands on. This is um, a play on the, oh gosh, I can't think of her name, but she's the Wicked Witch of the West character. Um, but I can't think of her name in Dorothy's actual story. Um, but with Toto, she stole Toto. The lady that stole Toto has that. <laughs> it's been a really long time since I've seen this movie. And then my take on the Munchkins are children. So I have the Lollipop Guild. And I don't remember what the, the ballerinas were called, but that's just, and Glinda the Good Witch, my take on it. And then Dorothy asleep in the poppies and the Emerald City and the Wizard of Oz and the Emerald City over there again with Dorothy. A big, you could put this in a center, you know, spread, or you could back pages with it as well. There's the fill the poppies, and I don't know how well you can see, but it's also distressed a bit. I mean, it's still very bright, but. And then these ones have been muted, so they are lighter, meant to be backing pages, because you could write on this with a black pen, and you'd be able to see it just fine. So there's a couple of those. This one's also muted. And then there's some old kind of fabric with florals and paper, grungy paper. And then this is like the gingham of Dorothy's dress, grungy. <clears throat> and then we have a page of tags and one journaling card. And then another page of tags and one journaling card. And then we have some fussy cuts. So you can cut those out and use them wherever you want on ephemera or what have you. And again, another page of Fussy Cuts. I don't know why I can't remember. I don't know. You know, these things from when you're a kid and then you kind of just forget. Uh, one number 10 envelope cover, but you don't have to cover an envelope. If you don't have number 10 envelopes, you can just cut that window out and kind of like make your own pockets and things. And it gives you that effect of um, the number 10 window envelope. And then this is 
an envelope you fold on these brown lines you know and that's the that's the main flap of the envelope so just a big envelope fun to use so that is what I have for almost Oz it was very tricky for me to come up with images I liked <laughs> it did take me a while so yeah that was that was a little bit that was a tricky one Mitz she got me she got me good but it was fun I had fun doing it all right, so I want to say hugs and blessings to Maggie, Tia, and Barbara. Thank you guys so much for your super kind comments. You guys are awesome, always nice, and lovely, and I really appreciate that very, very much. So thank you, and welcome to new subscribers, and welcome back to continuing subscribers, or those of you that have watched me for a long or short amount of time. All right, so this is our journal where we're at so far. I have not sewn in the signature yet. We'll do that today. Um... So I'm going to move this for now because I just want to show you really quick. I did one of those uh, tea bags and someone mentioned they don't have the large size tea bags and don't drink tea. And so what I wanted to say, she was like, maybe I could just make my own. It's really not like a hard thing. You could take almost any kind of paper you wanted. This is out of my the book I poke into but anyway it's sort of like this kind of a thing just barely folded at the top and like that and then they just fold this part over so you could use any kind of paper you wanted and then they staple it is how they get those tea bags so you could do it with all kinds of stuff and make them whatever size you wanted. You could make them even bigger than these. So that's a fantastic idea. Um, this one I did put a paper clip here just so it's not flopping and all that. But I did the, you know, the notebook version. And I, when I glued it down, I just glued the top and the bottom. And so I have a little spot I can tuck a card there. So that's fun. It's a fun little thing with a totally different look than what we did for the um, Somerset Studio Magazine and then I just have this flopping around with a stamp and a little piece of Tim Holtz tape on there and that's it so that was a fun that was a fun little make that I did this weekend just to play with some paper a bit and I've kind of gone along and I put this in here but we'll need to decorate those oh I know what else I did I put this here with that uh, paper clip that we did for the nut and butt neutrals and this is a piece of the cover the same uh, collage I used for the cover that's what that is so I just made a tag out of it and clipped that on there and then I'm gonna have to fix all these because I messed them up now. Those pages that were flipped up and stuff, I glued them down. Um, I can't remember who told me, and I'm sorry, I'm such a dingling, but um, one of you lovely ladies told me uh, to glue these and then you can make them into little tucks. So that's fabulous. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm sorry that my brain is Swiss cheese and I can never remember things like names. That has been a lifelong problem of mine. That is nothing new. I just struggle so much with names. Okay, there's another one of those paper clips that we made together. And this is um, a similar collage, <clears throat> like a whole page collage that I did in the past. And I splattered it all over with gold and black and white. So it's kind of another grungy one. And well, that's not new. Although that's that tag that I just showed you was in here, but I oh, that's right, I forgot I did decorate that. So I just decorated it. And these are my grungy art dolls, these funny little characters. That's what those are. And I just stuck that back there. Um, yeah, there's another one of those little tucks. They're a little bit tricky because it's not a very big pocket, you know what I mean? So you don't want anything too giant in them because it won't stay. I just tucked this card behind there. And I think that's all I have thus far. So we are gonna go ahead and get this bound. And I'm gonna use this book. And this is a Dean, I don't remember, is it Dean Kuntz? I think so. Anyway, it's a scary book, so 
don't read any of it because <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what all it says. But anyways, so what I've done is taken a ruler and I've just measured down one inch and I put a mark with a pencil. And I know you probably can't see. It's very hard with the... Um, this paper and then I went down to the middle of the page so this is a nine and a half or a nine inch piece of paper so um what is that four and a half no eight would be four what did I do five and a half I'm awful you guys my brain I'm telling you oh I did do four and a half that's not really the middle Amy Oh yeah, it is. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I just had a complete brain meld right there. Um, and then you have to go halfway. So this is an inch wide right here. So half an inch over, one inch down. So half an inch over, one inch down. This one's um, half an inch over, four and a half inches down. This one is an inch up and half an inch over. So you're just finding the middle. I guess is all I need to say. Um, I just have to always make it harder. And then I'm gonna take my awl, poke it in there. I can't put this in my book cradle because you can see this goes into a V, right? This is straight. So unless I wanted to fold this, which I don't, that's the only way I could use my book cradle. So for this kind of a, okay, sorry about that. I don't know what happened. My video just cut off. What I just did, Beef, and I hope you saw all this if you didn't um, I poked took my awl and poked my holes here into uh, this book and if you didn't hear my explanation I can't use the cradle because you can't fold you know that you don't want that flat spine to be folded so it can't go in the cradle but we will put the other papers into the cradle so this one you poke your holes then we need a template so I have a piece of one by nine paper here and oh let's do this before I forget we're gonna mark this as the top and you want that it's important um, maybe not as hugely important for this journal as it would be for a multiple signature journal but that can be very important because if there's any variation in your um, where you put the holes, it can make your signature, if you have multiple signatures, not stack up together. They won't be straight. Like one will be high, a little bit higher, one will be a little bit lower. You know what I'm saying? So that can be very important. It's not as important with this because we're just doing one signature. So I'm just gonna kinda figure out about where my hole is. And make sure it's in the right spot because that's important. So there's one hole. And then I'm gonna find my next hole. And you don't really have to poke the hole. I could just mark it with a pencil, but I might as well just poke it. So there's a second hole. And the third hole, okay. Then I'm gonna take this piece of paper with the top up there. And this, like I said, is important if you're gonna make multiple signature journals because you don't want that to change. And then, because this is nine inches, what I do if I have multiple signatures, I just have one for this, so it's not as big of a deal, but I try to find basically the center, just like I did when I poked those holes. And I make a mark, and I make a mark. That way the next signature, when I do it, I can line up that edge of the paper and the bottom edge with my template. So when I poke my holes, hopefully they're gonna all end up in about the same spot. That's, that's the hope anyway. <clears throat> I'm gonna take one of these off. Actually, I'm gonna take both of them off. Simply because this is so fat, like I said, if you do it before you start adding um, ephemera, it won't, it won't be so fat and you won't have this problem, but it is so. I'm doing that. Then I'm gonna make sure that those lines that I drew, I just showed you, are lined up. And I'm pushing down in the center of this because it's so fat. I don't normally do that. And I just poke until the cradle stops me. 
Then I go to the next hole and poke until it stops me. And then the last hole, oops, sorry, I bumped you guys. <clears throat> okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and put these back on because we're gonna move it to the, to the journal and I don't want it um, flopping all over the place like pages coming out of their spots. All right, so that's what the, that cradle is for. If you see that in my Etsy shop and are like, what in the world do you do with that? That's what you do with that. It just helps you get your holes right on the spine instead of, sometimes they poke out towards the front, poke out towards the back, I don't know, whatever, and it's annoying. So that just helps you keep your holes all aligned. Do I want, yeah, no. I think I'm gonna come from the outside, sorry. I want my strings on the outside for this one instead of the inside because they're going to get covered. It doesn't really make a difference. It's just if you want to put dangles and all that on, then you're going to want... Um, Got to find the center here. Okay, so it's coming through my center hole, so I'm pulling it. Yeah, if you want to put on dangles, then you're going to want your to start inside the book and go out. That way your strings will be hanging from the center. I want mine on the outside. I'm not putting dangles. But. Now I'm going down to the bottom hole. And you can see coming out, I'm gonna go through this bottom hole. And this is just a three hole pamphlet stitch. This is like super uh, beginner, easy kind of a stitch. And then we're gonna go all the way up to the top and come back into our journal. And I'm kind of going sideways. Gail is like, Gail Agostinelli, if you watch her, she's the master at this, honestly. I kind of stink at it. And a lot of it I think is in my head, but, cause I've done it a million times and I still get myself all wound up about it. So there's that. And I'm gonna go back through to the outside again. And back out through the hole. Okay. And then you want <clears throat> one string on that it has gone all the way through on either side of this center line right here that center string. So you want one on this side, one on this side. And I do lift mine a little bit. I'm gonna make sure, make sure your signature is right side up. <laughs> Done that, had it in, upside down. That's not fun. I take those off before I tie. And the reason I do that is because I feel like sometimes they're pulling away from the center and you can get gaps and then your signature is loose and I don't you don't want to lose signature so I'm lifting a little bit and I tie and I do two knots at least and I'm lifting because you want this taut almost like a guitar string or something like that and I'm just gonna do one more knot because I would normally tie a bow right there but I'm not gonna tie a bow because these are gonna be covered so it doesn't make any difference. Eh, I'm going to do that. And then I also, this is not something that everybody does. This is just my own thing. When I have them on the outside or the inside, I do put a dot of glue on the knots. And then these will get glued down as well when we put the fabric over it. And I don't have the fabric right here, so I'm not going to do that. But I would glue on there and then put the piece of fabric on. I forgot to grab it. <clears throat> so that is how I do a signature. And now it's nice and tight in there and we're set. So what we're gonna do today is, so you can keep your templates too if you plan on making multiples, that way you don't have to make one every time. <clears throat> And I use, I forgot to say, um, upholstery thread. It's for upholstery. It's this. And I get mine on Amazon. I don't know if you can get it at Joann's or any of those kind of places. My Joann's is kind of a joke. 
it never has anything I'm looking for, so I don't go in there a whole lot unless I'm just desperate for something. So anyways, <clears throat> what we're going to do today is put in, and you can see like this is a dyed piece of paper, so it shrunk, so it's not the same length, but I don't, that doesn't bother me, especially in a um, grungy journal. <clears throat> so we're going to play with this piece of brown packing paper. This is the same packing paper that I've been using to make ephemera and all kinds of things. I've just torn out a piece very roughly and put um, gesso, the Liquitex basic acrylic gesso on it. I am going to take this and put it behind this page. And we're going to do like a little collage on it and stuff like that. And I know it's a little weird because it's kind of like it's going the wrong direction. But when I look at this other side. Oh yeah, she's on here on the side that I would glue it on. Because otherwise I cover up this flower. So that was the issue. So that's why we're going this way. Whereas a book normally opens this direction. This is going to open this direction. Okay. So we're gonna glue this down and it's gonna be basically a piece of ephemera for our journal. And you will see in just a minute, I'm gonna have it at the bottom of this page and out to the edge. Then when we are on the other side of the page, you will see this part of it here. So we'll be doing some stuff to that. But first I wanna kind of grungy it up a little bit more before I glue it on there. And I think I'm gonna have it as a pocket as well so I'll probably glue down like that and up however that goes and then just the top part will be kind of a tuck but first let's get it inky so yeah what's going on anything exciting with y'all I hope you're all well and staying healthy I know they keep saying COVID's going around Idaho. I mean, luckily I am just home a lot. So and my husband's at the hospital, but he um, isn't around a whole lot of people. He does the central supply ordering kind of thing. So, I mean, he's around other coworkers, but not necessarily patients stuff like that but anyway I don't know I haven't I don't know of anybody well I actually I take that back my daughter's roommate did have it this summer but she never got it so I don't know. and you know he's he's fine young young people do pretty go through it pretty easy nothing like it was. Oh, my friend Betty Ann. I know she has it. I hope you're feeling better, Betty Ann. That's, it is no fun. You do kind of just feel cruddy. I just coughed forever when I had it. That was really my only thing I had. But I know a lot of people get it very, very severely. But yeah, I know that's what they've been saying on the radio and stuff, that it's a lot of people have it right now. Don't know. So this uh, brown paper I, is packaging I get uh, from Amazon. You know, whenever they send a package, they stick a piece of this paper in. So I've been trying to make stuff out of it because it is a nice weight. Uh, you can do a lot of different things with it. It's a big piece of paper, so you can tear it smaller, make covers, which is what I did with the journal. The inside is all this paper. Two, two layers of it together. But yeah, it's just kind of a fun paper to play with. And it curls and wrinkles and does all those things I like, so. This inside I'm probably gonna leave kind of like it is because you can write on it, but we might just put a few little stamp bits just so it has something a little bit interesting to look at. Yeah, I just want some kind of a little bit interactive pieces maybe in this journal. OK. 
Okay, so just, I don't know, a little something like that. And then we'll do the same thing on here. to put that away before I get it all over me. I'm going to go ahead and just use this. Just something. Do I want maybe a little gold on it? I maybe do. So see it'll hang out like that and it's kind of all Pattery looking. So I think I do want just a little gold. Where did I put my gold? Oh, there it is. So, you know, I just like to grab a little bit and put it on there. You can use gloves or, you know, a sponge or whatever it is if you don't like to do it like that. <laughs> Just my style. Get her done. Kind of do it like that. Oh, the whole back though. We're going to do a like a collage on there. But I think I might go ahead and put a little bit of this. I really like the gold with the grunge. And that I tend to do that pretty much every time I do a grungy journal. In some form or another. Watercolor, splatters, whatever. I usually find a way to incorporate some gold in there. just makes some of those textures, you know, because I like crinkled the paper first and then I put the gesso on. Just makes some of that stuff show up that you might not see otherwise. So that's kind of fun. this way and that way just so that you know all your everything is just not going in a direction unless you want it in a direction but I don't okay and I think I will do the back because like I said I'm going to do a collage but I like that gold look and the other fun part about doing these rubs like this <clears throat> is that it doesn't take long to dry. So you can usually work on it right after and it won't hurt anything. I could do a few little stampy bits on there too, huh? My daughter was talking about she's got, you know, to work pretty much all week, and I said, yeah, but at least you don't have to go to school like your brother, because <laughs> she's done now, so, she's like, oh yeah, you're right, because school started today, he doesn't start until tomorrow, but that's so funny, she's like, oh yeah, I don't. First time in 16 years. Isn't that crazy when you think about that? 
it's a fabulous feeling. I do remember. I mean, it's kind of uh, that double-edged sword thing. Like, you're happy, but you're a little bit sad, too. But it is fantastic not doing homework after you do it for so many years. I do. I do have to say. Because I thought about going back to school, and that's what pretty much once I quit, I never, sh I never should have. Because... You don't want to go back to doing that all the time. Even though it's silly. It just... Ugh. All right. So that's nice and grungy. So we're just going to put that on here as a pocket, like I said. Simplest pocket ever, right? A piece of paper folded in half. I mean, yes, it's all grungy and stuff. but So I really want to kind of get that even. And then I'm gonna get it even with the bottom, this kind of corner sort of is what I'm thinking. So this is gonna be the tricky part. <laughs> so I think what I'm gonna do is go, oh, I'm just gonna go up the side here. And along this edge, and across here, I know it doesn't go all the way over. And then we'll go up this side. And that should get the pocket thing happening, hopefully. So I want basically this corner, this corner. I'll bring it up closer in just a second. Just let me get I want this to open. And I don't want this stuck over here. <laughs> There's a lot of things to think about here. And then I can take and put a little dab on this corner. Make sure we get under there. I don't want it catching on things. I suppose you could have a little tuck there, but I don't want to. And then I don't care how messed up this gets as far as I like it when it rolls a little bit, folds a little bit. Because it's still all in the journal, so it's fine. This paper feels really cool when you paint it too. It gets a different texture to it. It almost feels like a faux leather or something, you know. Okay, so now it's a place to write. You can write in here. It's also a pocket. So let's see if I have I'm just going to fold one of these for now. This is just some tea dyed paper. Just to get an idea. So there's a little pocket there. It can't go very deep, as I mentioned, so I'd probably trim that off. But for now, it's fine just so you can see that there's a pocket in there. And then we're gonna decorate this side. And I don't love this edge right here because it's just sort of like, why is it like that? So I'm gonna bring this piece here, but I've put a fold in it and it'll, you know, still be able to open and close. I did, because this is vintage paper, I put some of the glue art glitter glue along that edge and let it dry. So it's all ready to go. So we're gonna ink it just so it doesn't split more. You could use washi tape or something like that, but I think it's okay. It doesn't feel that bad. You can see it's a little bit shiny. I guess I didn't really need to ink that, but that's okay.
Yeah, it's hot again today. We're supposed to be right about 100 degrees again. Well, we had Friday was nice and cool when I went and walked and it was glorious. But it's when I walked this morning it was hot already. So yeah, just gonna hang that over right where I have the fold and kind of do it in the middle. Okay, so I'm gonna use a glue stick. Get all my stuff put away. And cover the whole back of that because it's it's all getting glued. get glued down. Oh, I didn't ink that edge very well, did I? Ding ling. I don't know, I just wanted, I didn't like how flat that edge was, so, and that's of course personal preference. And then I cut this image out. I saw some collages on Pinterest, and they were just collages. They weren't meant for well, I mean, not that they're not meant for, but they weren't in a journal. They were just, you know, something you would frame. And it was just these cool images from, say, like a floral type book, one of the old ones, like I think this one was from the 70s, where they have the black and white images rather than the color ones. And they were using those in collages. And so I thought, oh, that would look really cool in, in a journal. So I'm kind of going with the same concept. It's obviously all different pieces than what they had, but it's the same idea. So I have this piece of, this is from Guest Check. I don't know, do I want the Guest Check side maybe more? Or just these numbers down here. I think I just like the numbers. So yeah, it's just basically all kinds of bits of found papers. And I'm sorry, I don't have, there's a few different artists that do that, those type of collages. And I didn't think to like write that down. It's just one of those moments of looking for inspiration. You know how you do, you just sit down and thumb flip through stuff. <laughs> find things that look interesting. And then I have a piece of math page. I'm trying to figure out how do I want this. I don't want to go really over that line just because that'll make it even harder to open and close. I didn't put that in the right spot. I can't see those numbers now, or I can't see the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that thing. I think I'll go about right there. <clears throat> but you can see, it's a book page. I suppose you probably could find like a digital or something of things like that. I just had one of these books and I never know what to do with it because a lot of the pictures are like that and I, I don't generally think to use those but I liked it. And of course I got glue on there because why would I not? Mm -hmm. 
Yep, that's just not going to totally come off, of course. And this piece, I might go ahead and overlap this direction because this is really thin uh, math book page, children's math book. A little bit of it. I don't know, I just thought that was a fun way to, I mean a lot of collages are the same style so it's not like some earth-shaking thing. I just really liked that it had the old black and white book page on them because a lot of times I think we don't think to use those because they aren't in color, you know, but in something like this, I think they're they're very cool. Okay, so see that still opens right. You can write. Then you have that. I think I'm gonna put it. This is one of my white grunge numbers. That's the kit name. <laughs> Sometimes I say things and I'm sure you guys are like, what is she even talking about? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a digital kit called White Grunge. Can I still open and close this? All right, and then I like to use these two on things. I've seen a few. I've used them before, but not very often, so but I do see people do that, and I like the look of it. It's just a random thing that uh, I guess you might not always think about using, but they kind of are fun. I think I'm going to use three of them. And I just ink them with my ink. I think you could see that probably. It's sort of like everything but the kitchen sink idea. You know what I mean? Those kind of things that, that's what my grandfather used to say. But um, it's just all kinds of randomness from a different time period. I mean, these we still use today and all that, but. Okay, and then we're gonna take my Stabilo All. And another thing they did is used like book pages that kids had scribbled on, or maybe they did the scribbling, I don't know. I didn't have anything like that. So I'm just gonna kinda loosely use this to make some marks that could be similar to, you know, kids scribbling in a book. Just was kind of a cool look, I thought. Of course, it's up to you and your interpretation of things. And then we're going to take our water and just do a little spritz, not a ton, because it just makes that um, spill all react. I don't want it running ah, a hole into the center there. It probably would be smarter to do this on a flat surface, but what fun is that? You can even touch it and it'll... mellow it out a little bit. That's cool. It kind of made some spots on the picture, like water spots. I'm going to do one more look right here. It made like little puckery. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it on the... I don't know. It's kind of cool. So anyway, that's our little <laughs> goofy art for the day. But I'm not going to mess with that a lot. I want stuff to dry before I'm opening and closing. But that's sort of a fun little piece that you can 
make for a grungy journal, any journal, you could do something similar. You just make it so it fits with whatever you're doing. But I do like this with that corner. So I'm very happy with that. And then we do have a pocket. And I'll, I'll, I don't know what I'll put in there. Maybe I'll leave that there so I remember. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a piece of tea dyed paper in there either. So, anywho, I hope you guys like that. I wanted to show you one other thing. The only thing with this, I might end up gluing it down. It grabs onto stuff, and I think that would make me nuts if it was my journal. Um, where is it? Oh, here. I did the same sort of thing with this tag as a trial because I was like, I don't know. But that's the image from the book, obviously. And then just, oh, I put gesso. That's what I need to do. I do like the gesso on there. So I think I'll add some of that. And I did that very similar to the way I did the gold. Just get it on my finger and just, probably would have been better to do it sooner, but it's all right. It'll kind of blend with that to build all push it around a little bit and you can kind of just put globs of it in spots you know and it just I don't know why that's interesting to me but I, I do like it make it thinner in some spots heavier in other spots I like it along the edge of torn paper too it helps blend the whole thing together I think this is a grungy journal that I just, not too bad. I don't have that much on my finger, luckily. Oh, that's too much. I just wanted a little bit more and I got a way more than I wanted. I'm sure that you're shocked. <laughs> mm. If you're smarter than me, you'll do this to a page without it being in the book. That's probably the wise choice. And then put it in the book when it's done. That's not fun. And it reacts with the ink, so it'll pick up the ink. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do to it. But anyhow, so this was my first try at that and that tag goes in one of the pockets up here. So we're gonna let that dry. I'm gonna let you guys go. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you, Carol, love you. And um, anybody else who wants to join in, go for it. Just um, post with your hashtag. And like I said, Carol and I are using digitals of mine that are grungy but if you don't have those just make something grungy like this was just pieces of you know book page a piece of packing paper you know whatever and uh just have fun with it so i will chat with you guys again soon love you bye